Hey everyone, this is Jamie. Um, so today I wanted to talk about uh, freedom of speech, which is a very complicated topic, which is kind of surprising because it kind of feels very straightforward, but people tend to use it in their own benefit. And in general, I think politics right now are a very sort of charged subject because everyone has their opinion and everyone kind of tends to live in a bubble that their opinion is the only opinion which matters. And some people think that if they're right wing, for instance, in their country, then they're right wing everywhere. And if they're left wing, they're left wing everywhere. And uh, when it comes to countries, you need to really assess whether you, what is the right wing, what is the left wing, what is the center in said country, and what are the values that uh, the political parties are pushing and are interested in and people are voting for, what are the rights, um, and etc. Also, um, if you're new to my channel, I guess, um, I pretty much just run, this is unedited, I, I do this as, a, as if I'm doing a talk, uh, which I've enjoyed in the past in the pre-COVID world, so right now you get to rumble, you get to see me rumble, etc. So, uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe, feel free to listen, feel free to leave a like, feel free to do whatever you want. And uh, when it comes to freedom of speech, I really wanted to raise this, and I have talked about this in the past, is this week and generally I kind of tend to think what happened throughout the week which sparked my interest and made me want to sit down and talk about it so yeah uh, so we still have the whole turf issue going on in the UK and I specifically worry about that because I have a very close friend in the UK I have several close friends in the UK and so uh, one of my closest friends in the UK who's also trans. So obviously I've been keeping an eye on the UK news and I get to hear in the insides. Also, I used to be there, I used to volunteer there. So obviously hearing all this monstrosity really kind of reflects on me. And I was also kind of a, well, not kind of, I was a victim of transphobia at the time and uh, etc. So obviously and because the internet is so sort of obsessed with talking about the US and the UK politics, it's obviously something that we have to know about, whether we want it or not, it gets shoved down our throats. And um, yeah, it's just the reality of things, so let's go. So I did a number of videos on uh, JK Rowling who is a massive turf, I do not agree with her. Uh, and the funny thing was, I was actually thinking of like rewatching Harry Potter, just the movies, because I kind of really, I have a bit of nostalgia for it. And um, I just kind of, and then the whole thing came out. And in general, I always found her to be very nationalistic, so that cut me off her for many years and then when I actually decided okay maybe I should sit down and, like rewatch the movies just to remember because I do have very fond memories when I was growing up and specifically of my dad who would um, go out of his way to go at 8am in the morning to buy me the books when they'd get released on the first day and I remember I even won a deck of cards once <laughs> which was really lovely from the bookstore but you know so basically, I do have fond memories, but unfortunately, because she's such a surf and uh, people who support her are very toxic, her opinion is toxic. And when people say, yeah, but it's freedom of speech for her to say such things, and then uh, this is where I really kind of find it really, really hard to understand how is this freedom of speech when you're being hateful towards someone else. So, what I want to say is, I don't think it's freedom of speech anymore if you want to say that 
person A does not equal person B. And I do understand that we're all different. We all have different needs. We, we all have a uh, different sort of, we come from different backgrounds. We come from, we, we may be religious, we may not be religious, but I still kind of feel that the right definition is, it's not even about ethnicity or race, but it's more about your class background. And uh, I may be biased in this case because I do come from Eastern Europe and obviously my views are more centered or I grew up obviously in an Eastern European household. And uh, even though I try to educate myself on modern issues uh, as much as possible, I obviously study, <laughs> as you probably may have guessed. And I still really try to, but in general, I still think that it depends on where you're born and your class rather than your race, ethnicity, and etc. Like, um, obviously, like, Beyonce has far more rights than, I don't know, a gay guy, a white gay guy in Eastern Europe. And uh, some privileges are available to certain people in certain states, the other ones aren't, like, for instance, in Arkansas, uh, there's the bill about uh, trans children. And in general, there's a lot of bills going on right now which are against trans girls competing in sports. And also, seeing Caitlyn Jenner, I know people did not have much faith in her, but uh, the thing was that she was the first trans person who made it all the way to Eastern Europe in a conversation. Like, so everyone kind of never talked about trans people. And then, obviously, she came out and it was massive. So obviously, I am very thankful that she came out. And um, to me, I remember I was watching her, um, I think it was in TLC, yeah, I am Kate. And I really enjoyed it. And I thought it was quite good from the episodes I've seen. And it sparks co conversation between me, between accepting people, between not accepting people. And people were watching it and understanding it more and more and more. And she gave voice to different trans people in the show as well. So it was quite a good show from what I remember. But regardless, uh, right now, obviously, she's stating and she's aiming, I think, for governor of California. So obviously, she's going to bat even more right wing than she should. So. Uh, so yeah, I really wanted to say that every trans person has a place in sports. And um, I wasn't very sporty growing up. And right now I'm a bit more of a fitness freak, but not really. It's more like I go to the gym. So I, I can only imagine a struggle which a child can go through like well being forced into another uh, locker room when obviously they are forced to go into a locker room where they do not belong and by, by they do not belong I want to say that trans women belong in women uh, locker rooms trans men in men locker rooms there's a reason trans women woman, trans man, trans man, so obviously when it comes to non-binary people, um, I think it's more of a gray area and it, it goes to the person who identifies and who is non-binary to decide which one is better for them. And this is where we do need gender neutral ones, not just um, for the safety, but for people who do not identify with either of the canon or uh, traditionally accepted by Western society genders for them to go into their own safe space. So yeah.
And in general, I do like the idea of gender neutral toilets. Like I remember in Sweden, they were implementing them. They were implementing them a bit in the UK when I was there. And uh, people just go there, they do their business and they leave. Like you have that in gay bars. Well, you used to have it. And now I feel like uh, everyone's sort of backtracking and doing different bills and doing stupidity. So that obviously upsets me. And I do understand that everyone kind of looks at politics from their own birdcage because we're all victims of capitalism. <laughs> um, and yeah. Uh, so you kind of tend to look at it from a leftist perspective or a right centrist or anarchist perspective, you know, if you go into proper anarchy, <laughs> not into like um, anarchy graffiti, which you have in Portugal, like we've got a graffiti on one of the streets, which I saw the other day, which was like anarchy and cold beer. And I was like, okay, but I know that anarchy isn't the classical anarchy here. And so, yeah. Anyway, what I wanted to say was that I wish people were more open-minded and they would understand that when it comes to freedom of speech, uh, it should be something like freedom to express yourself, but freedom to express yourself in a way that does not say that people shouldn't move into the country. People should not be able to buy goods. People should not be restricted to movement. People should not be restricted. And I do say this in a very sort of way that trans people deserve rights. Gay people deserve rights. Everyone deserves rights. Obviously, unless you're committing a crime and you belong in jail. And obviously, this is where it gets a bit murky. Because obviously, every country has different laws. And that's why I normally say you have to follow new and regulations and what are basic rights by said by such organizations. So that's roughly what I orient myself and uh, what I want other people to orient and s to rely on rather than um, just say, oh, well, in my country, gay people aren't people or, oh, I've never met trans person, so blah, blah, blah. No, trans rights are human rights, gay rights are human rights, human rights are human rights. And people don't seem to get that. And uh, I guess I'm just really kind of, well, I can't say I'm shocked because I used to really speak out against radical feminism for a long while. And uh, I remember I rejoiced when Mitch Fest went down, but apparently now the UK is Mitch Fest, so. And in general, people tend to forget that uh, radical feminism really paved the way for transphobia when it comes to the LGBT community. But, you know, people's memories is short, specifically uh, in American elections, when people say, oh, Mitt Romney is going to be the worst president we'll, we'll ever have, and then Donald Trump comes in, and there was Rickson's forum, and uh, before that, we have the now pardons uh, George Bush seconds. Is he second? Anyway, Iraq, George Bush. Uh, so yeah, so people tend to forget everything and they focus on what is the uh, left party saying? What is the Democrat party saying? Who's the evil now? And in general, when you look at the Democrat party, like I sparked quite a few conversations with a lot of people who are my friends or who are acquaintances, and I do ask this very often, like, um, so you said all of this would happen in the US if Trump got elected, but Biden got elected, and I still see that these things are happening, and he doesn't mention that, from what I've seen, that uh, we should respect trans people, we should fight different bathroom sport bills, I don't see that from him. All I see is random bullshit, which, yeah, happens. And also there's a whole tension between uh, US, Ukraine, Russia, uh, or rather, I'll, I'll word it differently so that people can understand my, where my side is. 
So it's literally U.S., the Donbass territory, and Russia. So yeah. Uh, and in general, politics has become, I think, a massive circus. And uh, it really feels like the country just pushes their own agenda, regardless of which party it is. And obviously, even though I myself identify as someone who's, I guess, who people say is extremely left, because I do look up to communist ideology, I do uh, like communism in theory, but I do see that, for instance, Latin America, no bueno. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it doesn't work in every society because we have different structures in society, we have different problems, and it's not like we can paste uh, a certain political ideology or system over everyone with the same rights. There was this very good picture or on Facebook many, many years ago before boomers took over Facebook, which was pretty much a fence, three people watching a football game, and all of them were given one box and they were all different heights and they were like, this is not equality. Equality is when everyone gets the certain amount of boxes they need to see everything clearly. So I really, I, I've said this example before and I'll say it again, this is what we need in the world. So we can't just paint everything red and call it communism and call it a day. That's not gonna work. And neither do I think of that Lenin theory about wearing one suit until it breaks and going to your factory, like, specific suit room and picking up a suit will be enough. We become very materialistic. Uh, it happens. And uh, when it comes to old theories, or in general, any theory, political theory, which you enjoy or you side with, you need to apply it to modern society, you need to apply it to the country you're in, to the country you're looking at, and to the fact that people deserve rights. So yeah. So one thing I want you to take from this video is every person has a right to belong. Every person has a right to be themselves. And if you feel threatened by a trans woman entering your locker room, and you identify as a woman or well I'm a I'm I'm a trans guy. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> but when I go into a men's locker room, I don't get any stares or any sort of problems. And I'm very fortunate for that. So I wish everyone could go in and not be harassed. But I also understand that uh like, I come from Eastern Europe, and obviously the laws there were very harsh. The situation was very harsh. It took me years to come out. It took me years to accept myself. It took me years for uh, my parents to come around. It took me years to have the courage to tell. So, it's very difficult, and I've talked about my trauma in numerous videos as well, and I'm sorry that I'm doing a bunch of sort of, like, links to out of my... Out of, my other videos and etc. So yeah, and in general, I remember there was a study that um, hate speech is mostly committed by women, and right now when there's such a big sort of turf activists speaking over trans people, speaking over in the UK, and in general, in the US, I think it's mixed, but in the UK, it's specifically TERFs pushing everyone. So I do want to say that abuse is not gendered. If you are being abused, you are a victim. <laughs> the abuser is an abuser regardless of gender. So yeah. And thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe. And uh, have a good week.